Okay, now that I've decided on a placement for my creature, and the beauty of having a smart layer is that I can make duplicates of this with Command J and try different placements. So just to quickly review, that's the placement I was kind of thinking of, but I can do Control T, make him really large, and that's the scale, but then move the creature back into the far distance underneath my different layers. So it's like a planet-sized creature. Or I can put it into the middle ground. You know, you decide on your placements. And you can try several different ones out. But I think this one works best for my creature in this setting. And I was choosing it largely uh, based on hand position. So I tilted my creature a little bit so that its feet would land in these places, right? And now I want to think, okay, are there any elements that I want from the landscape in front of my creature? And I can move it back down through the settings, right? And now that crystal is in front. But then the, the feet are hidden, right? So this is where we're, we're grateful to have these different layers. Because now maybe I want to take that crystal. And it's a combination of two layers here that make that crystal. Because I did a color correct layer. And maybe I want to duplicate those. And I might as well merge them while I'm at it. Merging the duplicate, and I'll label it crystal. And now I'll take that extra copy of the crystal and move it up above my creature. Right? Then I see, do I want any ele element of that in the foreground? And what I might decide is, I want another one. So I don't want that crystal in that place. It hides something. I don't want it to hide. But I do want a crystal in front of my character. Well, the problem with uh, taking a different background and then your landscape is you can't do this as much because it's not a PSD file. Yeah, that's true. If you're using... If you're using a found landscape, what you have to do is what I just did. If you want to kind of set your creature behind different parts, you have to cut out parts of it and then move them in front. So it's just all compositing. So now that I have this crystal kind of moved forward, I might edit its colors a little bit. I'm just trying to give kind of a nest for my creature, a place for it to be. And I can play with its levels. See, its levels are kind of right on. I think what I want to play with is its color balance. And let this one be a little cooler. And then its highlights maybe take down the yellow a little bit. Yeah. It's about there. Okay, now I've got this crystal element. I want it to kind of overlap a little bit. And I might tilt it differently, I might scale it differently. But one way to help your, your creature kind of blend into an environment is this is what I call relative perspective. You know, certain things overlapping other things. So I'm going to keep it maybe a little bit bigger, but make sure it's clear that it's overlapping my creature. 
between their legs. Then I'm going to take this edge, you know, from this element. And this is all the different problem solving you will do. I'm going to select the empty space around this layer, this rock layer, using the magic wand. These are all things we've done before. I have a one pixel feather for it. It's contiguous. So I pick the empty space. Then I'm going to say, select the inverse of that empty space. So it selects on the rocks itself. Then I can move that selection to the crystal and then delete that from the crystal, right? So the crystal looks like it's behind that ridge. And then I can use just my lasso or my eraser and get rid of the other parts of the crystal layer I don't want that are getting in the way. And I can zoom in for more fidelity. And if the crystal looks a little blurred out because I, I made it a little bit bigger and I shrunk it and I moved it again and it wasn't a smart layer anymore, I might have to use that sharpening filter because it is such a strong foreground element. So I'm going to go to Filter, Sharpen, Smart Sharpen. I'm going to use these sliders and not do more than I need to do. This is very subtle. And all this Sharpen does is it increases the contrast between pixel edges. It doesn't create new pixels. It just sharpens the contrast. Look at it from a distance. Yes, that looks pretty good. Wouldn't it be great if I had another crystal that was like right here, maybe? Ah. I'll just keep making that mistake all semester. The difference between Photoshop and Photo P. Control T, not Command T. So in that way, Yeah, I think I like that placement. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing again. Go to the rock layer, do the magic wand, select the empty space, then select the inverse of that, select inverse, just to delete away from my crystal. I don't want to erase the rock. I want to erase away from the thing I copied, which is the crystal. Uh, but this time, I don't think I want a feather at all. So I'm going to keep it at zero, even for the magic wand. Select that empty space. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. This prepares us for animating, you know, really having to deal with all these different layers, all these different concerns. Invert that selection and then delete that from the crystal just so I get that edge. Okay, then I can use dodge and burn on the crystal layer. So all of our old tricks come in. And right now I'm just compositing the landscape to better suit my creature. And I'm gonna need to burn the highlights as well as the midtones. And right now it's going really strong, so I need to take it at less than 30. Because the lighting makes sense if this arm is in front of it, that this crystal would have a shadow on it. at least at the bottom here. Okay, now I can rasterize my creature. I right click and I rasterize, and then I decide, oh, I need to burn that side of the creature a little bit too. 
to help it stand out. Maybe I even need to cut away this tiny highlight. So I'm not sure that's on my creature. It's not. So now I go back in my landscape and find what element needs to be burned to get that little halo out. Or I can simply use another trick that we've learned, which is to clone stamp. I can clone stamp a little bit of this texture from the crystal. I'm on the crystal layer. I can do it at a lower opacity and just run that right onto that edge. This should be a softer edge brush. And I can control that lighting. All right, so, so far, I've placed my creature. I put a crystal there. And I think that will do it. Um, then I might play with the adjustments of that crystal now that everything's in place. And I'm actually going to limit the highlights a little bit. And that kind of puts it in the shadow of the creature. And I might even take its saturation down a little bit. Okay, another way I want to affect the background is this rock is too bright to be underneath my creature. So all I'm going to do is play with its levels. So it's revisiting all of these compositing skills. Starting with placement, then dealing with lighting and color. Limit the highlights, darken the midtones. Good. Okay, now if I turn off my creature, this is what's left, right? But wouldn't it be nice if instead of having to adjust each element, I could just treat it all as one kind of flat background? Even though the landscape is broken up into all these different layers. So you can do that. Go to your top landscape you know, your top foreground layer, click on that, and then create a new layer. And then that new layer, you're going to fill with middle gray at 100%. This is what's called an overlay layer. It'll be a non-destructive way that we can uh, add shadows and highlights to the setting. And the way we do that is to set this layer to overlay mode. And because it's middle gray on overlay mode, right now it doesn't do anything. But if we burn that gray layer, this is called a non-destructive layer. So if we now burn on the gray layer, instead of having to adjust the individual levels of the different elements, come on, where's my cursor? There it is. I'm gonna use a rather large, very soft burn brush, at an exposure of about 20. I can just burn the gray Oh, I'm on highlights right now. I want to be on midtones. 